everybody. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We are live and uh, here with Rachel Fresco. Um, I love Rachel because she is such an innovator and uh, someone who thinks outside the box and has really brought to us clinicians um, some incredible tools that we will talk about today. Um, she has been the founder of Biobotanical Research and um, the creator of Biocidens. You can find her and her um, products at biocidens.com. Uh, but what I love is just she's got this great mind to think outside the box. And Rachel, thank you so much for joining and taking the time today. I'd love to hear your story on how you got started and how you founded the company, like way back, what happened and how did that all come about? Thanks, Jill. It's great to be here with you again. And um, for those who haven't heard the story, it was, it was sort of one of those kismet things. I was um, just finished acupuncture school and had taken my state boards, sort of waiting for my license to arrive in the mail, as it were. And meanwhile, I was working at a Chinese herb company as a technical consultant, helping the doctors uh, learn about the Chinese herb formulas. And um, I was doing veterinary acupuncture on the side and working with very, some very tricky cases with another veterinarian. And we started to see that there, was, there were situations where the drug therapies hadn't been working, but the botanicals were really working in some difficult to treat infections in animals. And so meanwhile, back at the herb company, I'm getting phone calls from doctors in San Francisco that are seeing the beginning of AIDS patients. Mm -hmm. And those patients had diarrheal diseases, they had opportunistic infections, they had thrush, they had all kinds of things, and there really weren't any treatments at that point yet. And, and so the doctors were looking sort of for any tools they could use to support these patients' health. And so I, you know, I had mentioned that the, the herbs I had been using had been useful in some very difficult infections in animals, and let's try them out. So some of the doctors started using them and, and giving me good feedback. And then one of the doctors, unbeknownst to me, sent the formula to Great Smokies Diagnostic Labs, which is now Genova Diagnostics. And so the owner of this lab calls me up. Now you gotta remember, I'm an acupuncturist and I don't know anything about comprehensive digestive stool analysis or anything else like that. You know, my training's in Chinese medicine. But this, the owner of the lab calls me up and he's like, I don't know who you are or what this is, but it kills everything. I'm like, well, is that good? And he's like, well, yeah, you know, this, we've tested it against all these different bacteria and fungal and, and yeast species, and we want to put it on our panel. I'm like, well, okay, you can do that. So, so they did. And over six year period, they tested 250,000 or more patient samples. And the biocidin came up as the most highly sensitive agent. So, you know, if you were looking at like a Petri dish, of, of something growing like candida, and they tried different remedies on the dish, both natural and drug therapies, the biocidin was always the most effective one. So many, many doctors started hearing about it and contacting me. And so I basically had to start a company to deal with demand for the formula. And then as I saw the need, I started to think about, well, how do we support the system while people are taking these herbs? What else do they need? Do they need to bind toxins? Do they need to support their good flora? Do they, they need to work on, on viral conditions too at the same time? Like what, what is it that we're seeing clinically? And so it sort of journey for me into functional medicine. So I was at the very first IFM meeting way back when with biocidin. And so it's interesting how my life just took a turn into being sort of a specialist in biofilms and infection. And I never did become an acupuncturist though. So oh, oh. Well, we are so grateful, Rachel, oh. because you bring the brilliance to us clinicians and you support us by, I always say, you know, in allopathic medicine, I trained as a medical doctor and our toolbox is really small. I, I'm really glad I learned it because it gives me a great foundation on which to build. But my toolbox was medications and surgery and they're appropriate at times. But like you said, a lot of times when someone has SIBO or SIFO, these bacterial infections or the fungal overgrowth of the gut or parasitic infections or viral infections, which we'll talk about all those today, the drugs don't cut it in the sense of they're laser sharp and they have a, a plethora of side effects. So say I give an antibiotic for SIBO, I'm going to cause a yeast to be worse. So what I love about the herbal combinations is often they're multifaceted, multi-targeted. So you might do one product and it actually can have activity against bacteria, fungi, and yeast or viruses even, right? That's right. And that's what we found. You know, when we started to do the research, um, when you really started to dig into PubMed and you look at the different um, studies that have been done on a lot of the ingredients that are in the biocide, we've got 17 different ingredients in there. Many of them are, are antimicrobial 
and multi-target it. And some of those are additionally immune modulator or anti-inflammatory or supporting the liver or detoxification pathways. So when you put that whole combination together, you get something that doesn't throw people off balance. Like if you took one single ingredient, for, for example, my experience has been, if you use something like straight oregano oil, it's a great killing agent, but it also can throw people off balance and they might not be able to tolerate it long term. And most of the people, I think you'd agree, who are coming to their functional medicine practitioners have chronic issues. You know, they've had these things, maybe they've been going on for more than five or 10 years even. So the, the path to healing is gonna take time. You know, changing their diet, looking at all the different systems, and most importantly, balancing the gut and dealing with, you know, dysbiosis or disordered environments. And so that's what's been exciting for me. And you know, the first time I lectured um, to a group of MDs um, on biofilms, I asked them to raise their hands. How many of you understood chronic infections and biofilms? And only like, like less than 10% of them raised their hands. And then after the lecture, a lot of them came up to me and like, this makes so much sense. Now I get it, like the sinus infections, why they keep coming back, the kids with the ear infections, the urinary tract infections, these gut issues. There's a reason why we need to think more holistically. You know, we need to, we need to think about the biofilm issue. We need to think about the multi-microbe issue. We need to modulate the immune system at the same time. And then look at the causative factors in, in other areas of the patient's lifestyle. So I love that you're saying this, love that we're starting with biofilms, because I want to say my clinical experience, same thing is these persistent like bacterial overgrowth in the small bowel, also called SIBO. You probably listeners have heard of that, or maybe been diagnosed with that. Cephal fungal overgrowth, this chronic sinus infections, um, even chronic lung issues like persistent old mycoplasma, old chlamydia pneumonia. These are atypical pneumonias that can kind of come up and down and back and forth. Um, those biofilms are key. And I'll tell you my experience. Um, we find something in, in our mold patients called Marcon's, and it's really about the biofilms because the biofilms of that bacteria creates destroy pituitary hormones like MSH. So that's a lot of complex biochemistry, but all that to say, those biofilms in the sinuses, I always describe them as like pond scum. So it's like right. this gummy kind of stuff that hides all the infections. And they actually, by themselves, the biofilms create damage to the hypothalamic pituitary access. So all that to say, what we found we, years ago, we threw heavy antibiotics, some of them that caused hearing toxicity at this Marcon's. And then we've shifted to now just treating with biofilm agents alone and finding we can get rid of the infection. So it makes perfect sense to me in these chronic long-term patients with gut issues. I, th I think Biocidin, which is your namesake um, um, product that we can talk about all the different uses for, one of them is gut. We use this in kids, adults, um, all ages. There's a, a liquid form that we can use. There's a, a liposomal form that's a little more systemic. And if I have any errors here, Rachel, you can correct me. Um, but that liquid form really good has been for decades for gut issues. And now we have, um, we've even put it into neti pots and things where, where patients with right. the instructions of the clinician can use it to get those biofilms out. All that to say, sometimes all we need to do is treat the biofilm and it eradicates the infection. What's your thoughts on that and biofilms being maybe a primary target? Well, here's my thought. It's hard to say with biocidin, you know, it's definitely breaking the biofilms because we've done the research on that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, a couple of different university studies on biofilms where we saw it break apart any type of biofilm, whether it was yeast or bacteria. Um, we even looked at Lyme biofilms. Yeah. Um, we looked at biofilms in the mouth. Rachel, I always add it to my Lyme protocols. I'm just going to say that right out front. I use drugs, I use herbs, I use all kinds of protocols. Almost everyone I see that has Lyme or co-infections is on a form of biocidin. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's really useful that way. So I think that, that if you just break the biofilm, maybe your immune system can kick in enough to kill those infections, but I think it's helpful to use something like biocidin that's going to do both. It's going to break the biofilms and it's going to address the infection as well. We actually did some studies before and after on patients with Marcon's. I don't know if you wow. saw this. No, I didn't. Totally cleared. Yeah, and, I, I love it. And, and now we're doing, we did a study with 40 patients uh, with the oat test mm -hmm. on mycotoxins. Oh, yes. So, we, so we're going to be publishing that soon. And we've got a SIBO uh, trial starting up. It's interesting, the doctor who's doing the SIBO trial um, is the head of the College of Integrative Dermatology. Oh, wow. Um, Dr. Raj Sivamani, do you know him? Yeah, I've heard, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Raj was telling me that so many patients that have SIBO have eczema. And I'm like, well, of course, because in Chinese medicine, the lung, large intestine, and the skin are all part of the same system. 
That makes so, perfect sense. And they all have endotoxemia. So that's when the gut bacteria, the codeine's called LPS, they cross over into the immune system. And that whole endotoxemia LPS thing, which is again, just for simplicity's sake, bacterial codeines cross over the enterocytes, the lining of the gut into the blood and create havoc. And they are the most potent inflammatory trigger known to man. They underlie heart disease, obesity, diabetes, insomnia, mood disorders, even as such as bipolar and uh, schizophrenia. They underlie testosterone deficiency in men. They underlie autoimmunity. So this is a huge swath of things. And this LPS is at the root. And this is one of the things that biocide would target is that excessive bacteria. Right. And so that's what we've seen is the LPS can be found, you know, causing the, the, the amyloid plaque mm -hmm. to build up in the brain because the body's trying to protect itself from this toxic endotoxin and everywhere else in the body. I had a, a client one time call us who um, was a local practitioner. She had tested her stool and had four plus Klebsiella pneumonia. She had rheumatoid arthritis and she would have these flares. The only thing that showed up in her lab work was the Klebsiella. And I'm like, well, let's do a cleanse. We'll throw the whole, you know, the biocidin program. We used everything on our, in our comprehensive program for her. Let's do it. I said, let's do it for eight weeks and then go back and retest. And sure enough, in eight weeks, no more Klebsiella. And she didn't have another RA flare. And I'm like, this is good. Let's keep going now at maybe a maintenance dose. And then I want you to check in with me every three months for the next year. And then one at the one year mark, I want you to do one more month of full on treatment again. I've been keeping up with her. She never has had another flare. So I think for a lot of people, it's not that simplistic, but in her case, that one gram negative bacteria, right? That's causing the endotoxin issue was, was the culprit for her. Um, I am not surprised at all, Rachel, because I've seen, I do a ton of Crohn's and colitis patients, which are severe inflammatory bowel disease, a little bit different from SIBO and SIFO in the sense of it's inflammatory. It's usually lifelong, they considered incurable, which is funny because 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with Crohn's and I don't have it anymore. I'm cured by all of the stuff we're doing today, talking about today, but Klebsiella, I have seen more than once, I would say dozens of times as a massive trigger for inflammatory bowel. Now, not all inflammatory bowel is triggered by the same bacteria. So this is not a one size fits all, but right. there have been enough of them that I've seen that Klebsiella, you think of it, we see it enough that we think of it as kind of like a not super awful player, but just like your case with the rheumatoid arthritis, I see it as a big deal and I always seek to eradicated if, I, if it's present. Well, especially if there's four plus, that's a yes, high level. Yes, the high yeah. level, exactly. Well, we, had, we had an autistic child too, that the only thing that showed up was the Klebsiella. Mm -hmm. And after he was cleared of that, all of a sudden his speech came back. He was able to go into the normal class at school when he'd been in the special ed class and his parents wrote us a letter about that and told us the story. So I think that it's a good idea to get these kind of tests run if you have any issues to see if there's any bad players in there and then work up you know, a protocol that, that you can that you can easily do. So I love this because we started about the gut, which is so core. Let's talk a little bit about the lungs. Right before we got on, you mentioned we're getting new research on the lung gut connection. And I know, like you said, in traditional Chinese medicine, the colon and lungs are connected. I would love to hear a little bit about what you're seeing or reading about the lungs, especially now that we have COVID and it doesn't, it affects the whole body, not just the lungs, but primarily these respiratory viruses can uh, clearly affect the lungs. What's your thoughts on that? And what should we be thinking about as clinicians? Well, I tell you, the person who would be the best to talk about this is Dr. Jocelyn Strand, who just did an article on this for Kara Fitzgerald's website. But, but what I understood from the research was is that they used to think that the lung was sterile. Yes. But now we're finding no, it has a microbiome. And if you, just like the gut, if you have disordered you know, microbiome in the lungs, if you have an oral cavity full of pathogens, that the most impact on the lungs is going to be from the mouth. Mm -hmm. And so anything you can do to protect your oral care is going to positively impact your lungs ability to fight infection, to not succumb to viruses. So there's good research that taking care of the oral lung microbiome could be a main, a mainstay of prevention. And it's interesting because when we did the studies on the biocidin toothpaste, which is called dental sidin, mm -hmm. um, we saw up to 35 different pathogens hiding out, like in a root canal cavitation. And then after using our program with the liposomal oral rinse, as well as the toothpaste, those pathogens came down to only three. And also studies that candida in the gut can be reduced by 50% just by 
brushing your teeth more after meals. Wow, this is so relevant. So I definitely want to t- wanted to talk about your dental products because this is the area where most clinicians are not thinking about, and yet it's absolutely profoundly affecting our patients' health. And I mean, you literally, like you said, we've done the test. I've done them myself. So I have two um, uh, actually lacking teeth here. They're the third um, molar back. I can't remember the numbers there. If you're a dentist out there, I'm sorry. But um, I remember, this has probably been eight years ago, I looked at the acupuncture meridian charts on these teeth, and they were related to pancreas, colon, and breast. And I looked at my health history. I had pancreatic insufficiency, I had Crohn's disease, and I had breast cancer. I thought, oh my goodness, those were my two root canal teeth. I went the next day, called the dentist, my biological dentist, that I need to get these out of my mouth. And at the time I had had psoriasis. I don't have psoriasis anymore. Within seven days of pulling those two teeth, my psoriasis was gone. So for me, that was a very personal um, testimony to how big a deal this is in your mouth. So you showed me the data on this, you know, because we can pull the teeth or we can um, swab and look at the DNA from all the organisms. And like you said, there was 20, 30 of them. And after, was it four weeks with the dental side and toothpaste? Yeah, they're down to like three. And and some of the ones in there, you just don't want to think about having in your mouth like HPV and amoebas. And it's like, it's really scary. And the dentist um, that we're working with now and the hygienist, um, she's called the queen of dental hygiene, Barbara Tritz. And if anybody wants to look her up, she's very cool. And and she showed me the um, phase contrast live microscopy wow. of going into a patient's pocket, just like a four millimeter pocket in the office, taking a sample, putting it on the slide, and then watching everything that was in there. And you would see rods and spirochetes. You'd see all these things swimming around. And then applying the dental sidon, and then going back and taking another swab, 10 minutes later, they were all gone. And so she thinks that this is like, this is going to be groundbreaking for people's oral care. The fact that we can actually strongly impact the microbial balance in the mouth and stop the, the biofilms, the plaque from developing. So, so this is really key. And I'm really excited next year to, to be working with that more. I am too. And I use your dental side and I use, and there's an oral rinse as well. And I'm going to show you guys a sneak peek. I've never shared this publicly, but because I found it really easily, check this out, Rachel, you'll find this pretty cool too. So this is my sample from my root canal tooth on the right side. I don't know how many years ago, maybe six or eight years ago. This is what grew. Um, micro, this, so I'm sorry, this is DNA PCR. So this is PCR right. testing um, in the tooth. Strep, Provitella, Tropomonas. There is a protozoa here. There is clearly bacteria here. Um, there is all kinds of things here. I mean, you, can you believe? And red is bad. Red is significant. Look at this. So this is what was in my mouth, in my root canal. Now, my immune system has never been great. So no surprise, no shock that I have a lot more organisms than maybe the average person. But this is a big deal. Like I said, from personal experience, is it any wonder that those bacteria, they have direct access to your bloodstream? I had psoriasis. I no longer have that. As soon as that was out of my mouth, just like that RA patient with Klebsiella, it went away. Isn't that amazing? I'm, I'm so glad I found that. But, and of course, I love using that frequently now because, um, and I've also used like a water pick and put the biocide in the water. I too. So I take, I take the, well, so what my dentist is doing now, she's doing a study with us. So she's, she's using this in the scaling fluid with the high, they do the sonic scaling. Yes. She's using this in the fluid mixture and then having the patients like do a, like an oil pull with it at the end and then go home and put this in their water pick and use it every day in addition to the toothpaste. And we're seeing pocket probing depths coming down in half. We're seeing the number of pathogens just like practically disappearing. So I'm hoping that we can actually interest a a dental school into doing a full double blind study about this because this is really groundbreaking. If you can make that much impact just by doing something so simple. And the cool thing about the biocidin is that unlike the things that dentists normally use, like gentamicin, and uh, it doesn't kill the beneficial flora. We're doing a study right now, John, if you heard this, mm-hmm. Sun Genomics is doing a study for us on the whole genomic sequencing of the gut for patients on biocidin. Wow. And what we found is, is that the keystone species, the acromancia bacteria, yeah. which is the baseline for all the beneficials, is going up in every single patient. So it's, it's not heart hurting the good flora. In fact, it's increasing the diversity and number of beneficials. 
So we can only assume that that's the, the same with the mouth. You know, it's all part of one system. Right, absolutely. Okay, this is really exciting because I teach a lot on the gut and I've done a lot of the research on the probiotics and stuff. And as your company has one of the few spore probiotics, same thing, they're the ones, so these spores, and it's bioflora, correct? Am I saying oh, that? Proflora. Pro, thank you. I'm so sorry. Proflora, 4R, right? For your okay. um, probiotic. And it's a spore. So let me tell you real quickly, if you're listening about the spores. So again, we've used lactobacillus bifidobacter. You might look at your bottle in your fridge and see eight or 10 strains. But what happens is uh, we have hundreds, if not thousands of strains in our actual gut. And the postulate was that could we be actually be creating monoculture, meaning like a less diverse culture by giving a four or eight or 10 strain probiotic for years? I think the answer could be yes. And what I saw in clinical practice is patients with SIBO and SIFO actually did not usually tolerate, not usually, but sometimes I should, I'll clarify, sometimes they didn't tolerate these lactobacillus because they already had too much in their small bowel. Right. So I started shifting to spores. And I'll tell you, Rachel, years ago when I had no idea what a spore was, I found this one strain called Bacillus coagulans. Mm -hmm. I had no clue what it was, but this was when I had Crohn's and was healing. And all I knew was it was the one probiotic that worked for me. I didn't know anything about it scientifically, just that my body liked it. And then as I come to find out the spores, they are the only ones that now have studies to increase acromancy or these keystones and increase diversity. And diversity is king. So having this diverse milieu, especially the keystones, two of the common ones, which are funny long names are acromancia and uh, fecal bacterium prisnitsky. And these uh, keystone strains, if you have them present in good amounts in your gut, they actually indicate diversity just by being there. So the fact that Rachel, you're saying that you've seen increased numbers after the use of this, and then I've seen that with the spore studies and your product in particular, um, these are really powerful. So I'm a huge fan of spore probiotics. I love them too. And I love the fact that by adding the quercetin to the proflora, this, this particular quercetin called QU995 is 17 times more bioavailable than regular quercetin. So, so many patients with SIBO or SIFO have bloating and gas, and they can sometimes get exaggerated. Yes, yes. But the, the addition of the quercetin there really calms that mast cell response down. Maybe you can talk about that more. And it, it helps um, seal the tight junctions, which are the root of the leaky gut issue. So that's why I added that to the spores so that we kind of had a one-two for the you know, calming down the inflammation and, and then supporting the good bacteria. Yeah, and that's where you're so brilliant because again, you take that background in traditional Chinese herbs and you know it takes a village, right? Like, well, just like you said in the beginning, just we have these individual ingredients and they can work and I combine them a lot of times, but your formulas all contain the thought out process of what else might actually modulate this. And I feel like that product is really good for calming that inflammatory response because of the quercetin and marshmallow. And was there a third, a third ingredient too? Um, aloe. Yes. Okay. And aloe is soothing, coating, and good for healing, good for um, just keeping the bowels moving, all that good stuff. So yeah. that's a great product. Um, we don't have a ton of time left, but let's talk a little bit about immune system because everybody's worried about that. We're going into flu season on top of COVID. What do you use? What's your favorite tips and tricks for, for people? Well, the thing that we have that we've studied is the throat spray version of the biocidin. So we did a study with a university and they found a 66% increase in immune response in the upper respiratory tract. Wow. So, I mean, with, with each dose, you're, you know, you're, you're raising your body's ability to protect you and you've got the antimicrobial activity of this. So what I do is I have one of these in my car, in my purse, whenever I'm gonna go in or out of a store or exposed to people, I, I just use this daily, make sure to use it at least three times a day and then extra times if I'm going out. And then of course I'm using vitamin D, zinc, C, I'm looking at, you know, I'm getting in the sun more. I never used to like to be in the sun. Now I'm going and laying out on my back porch because we're, we're all home with COVID anyway, might as well. <laughs> you know? But I have a tan now. <laughs> and um, so, you know, I think, I think that's important. Um, diet is going to be really critical right now. And so it's, you know, the nice thing about being home is we do have a little bit more time to do, to prepare healthy food. And sometimes if I do get busy, you know, I'll order the Uber Eats to bring me celery juice, you know, and just healthy things. And I think that helps too. What do you think? Gosh, I love that. I love, I never thought about Uber Eats in my mind. Oh, it's kind of like fast food, but it's not. You can get some really clean stuff. I never thought about ordering celery juice. That's an awesome idea. I love I it. A big I can get like a, a huge one and you know, I'll, it'll last me all day long. I and love it. I'm so, I know. There's, a, there's a, a company called Clean Juice and uh -huh. everything they have is organic. 
And so okay. you can, I get it with cucumber added because it's a little extra high. Oh, that sounds so delicious. I'm, I'm totally writing that one down because <laughs> I love those pearls. Yeah. And it's funny because years ago I did Instacart and kind of got my groceries delivered and it was this big secret. Well, of course now everybody, I mean, that's great that we can all get it um, and get it easily. I have the Costco delivery because of those large like Pellegrino cases that I don't yep. want to carry and Epsom salts, which I get from Costco. So if you're a bath person, I just had 10 boxes of salt sitting outside my door last night because I didn't want to carry them and I had them delivered and it was great because if you hear me talk about Epsom salt baths, which is a great detox thing you can do at night, I get the six pound bags and put a half of the bag in the bathtub because you want that saturation so that it goes mm -hmm. into your skin. Um, but yes, I have my biocide spray in the fridge. Um, I actually made a nasal spray homemade. Um, I can't really advise you over the um, public here, but if, if you, uh, there are, there's a way that you can create a, a spray so that you can, um, you know. Yeah, if you're, if you're going to do that, use the regular biocide liquid because the throat spray has too much alcohol and that would be burning. But, you know, I've done this myself too. And, you know, we can't give medical advice, but what I've done for myself Perfect. is put about 10 or 12 drops in an ounce of saline and then you want to use that up within a couple of days, you, you know, because it's not preserved. So um, that has really helped. Uh, Thank you for sharing what you do. I would very similar. And I found too, and especially with the mold, I know you presented a case study of a young girl who had mycotoxins in the urine. She was going to a daycare with mold and they pre-treated with, um, I think it was a four to eight week. I don't know the exact time frame, but a short time frame with um, nasal spray and the mycotoxins completely were gone. Right, and I would use the GI detox at that point too. And I know you like this product, Jill, that, because it's a binder and anybody with mycotoxin issues or LPS issues, um, anybody who's using biocidin and suspects that they're having some die off should be using a binder. Thank you. It's, I can't believe I forgot that because that is everybody gets GI detox in my office. So let's talk really quickly about that. So GI detox is an incredible, I'll let you read the ingredients in a second here, but it's an incredible mixture of binders. Binders have synergy. So I love charcoal. I love clay and I love the combinations, but when you get several binders together, they have different affinities. So I find it works much better um, putting multiple binders together because they each grab onto different toxins slightly differently. Yeah. So tell right. us exactly what's in the GID talk. Right, so you've got the, the zeolite and the activated charcoal, and then you've got silica, which was going to bind to metals more, and then the apple pectin and the humic acid and fulvic acid, which work on xenobiotics as well. So, you know, you're kind of covering a lot of bases with this. Yeah, you've done a great, great job. That is literally my favorite binder. And the humic fulvic acid, many people don't know, is antiviral. So it has some antiviral effect. Um, we'll use that sometimes in other formulas, but I love that it's in there because it's got a really gut. It actually, um, some of the studies showing decreased permeability in the gut as well. So it's got other little cool things about it that, that are powerful. I'll share a quick story. So yeah. last night I ordered dinner to be delivered from a local fish restaurant and I've ordered dinner from there before and it's always been really clean and fine, but I ordered some, some oak grilled oysters and some salmon and vegetables. I mean, how bad that could, could that be, right? I don't know why, but I went into a full like IBS episode. I was like oh. cramping, my, I swelled up like a drum. I was like doubled over. I was running to the bathroom. I, I was like emptying the, my guts from the last 10 years. And I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? And then I remembered, oh my God, this happened once before when I ate oysters. I don't know if suddenly I've become allergic to oysters. What a weird thing to become allergic to. But anyway, so I thought about it. I was like, what am I going to do right now, right this second to get me out of pain? I'm like doubled over. My dog's looking at me like, mommy, what's wrong? Um, I took like six GI detox, like on the spot and laid down on the massage table and put some essential oils on my stomach and gently rubbed them and did the um, infrared pad, just laid on it to stop the spasm. I was just full on spasm. And then once I felt a little bit better, I got up and took like three or four more. And within an hour, it was completely over. And usually if I have those kind of bouts, I don't know about you, do you get that sometimes where you eat something bad and you just, yeah. it's not fun. If anybody else has that, it's really not, it's very painful. And um, so this is a good thing to have in the medicine cabinet. If you eat something bad, if you're exposed to mold, um, anytime, you know, if you're traveling, this is a really good one to have on here. I always have it in my travel bag. And I literally, I remember a guy sat next to me was having one of those episodes. Not this is when we were traveling a couple years ago. I'm like, if you trust me, you know, here, try this. And he was like, what did you give me? 30 minutes later, you felt amazing. So I couldn't agree more with you. It's my travel trick really, because if you get bad food, too much alcohol, now I don't drink, but if you are drinking excessively, it's good for that too. Um, so there's a lot of, and of course, food poisoning or any kind of weird, bad food, it'll just mop it right up. 
Um, Rachel, I knew this was going to happen because we could talk for like two hours. So we're going to have to have you back on. Thank you so much for your time today. I know, I mean, the listeners are just like, wow, this is great. They want more information. So we'll be sure to include links to your site and your products and all that information. And then we'll do this again um, in a few months. But thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, it's great to be on and see you again. Sounds good.